Hi everyone. Our topic of the day is mindful testing, balancing test coverage and maintenance. Before we dive into the topic, a quick introduction to us. My name is Chaitali and I am an engineering manager in Google Cloud's engineering productivity organization. Hello everyone. My name is Shadi. I'm an engineering manager in Google Cloud's engineering productivity organization too. So today we'll be talking to you about what is mindful testing. We also would like to talk to you about why mindful testing is an important concept that you could practice in your organization and what benefits that would give you. We will talk about five tips on how you can practice mindful testing. Along the way, We'll talk about various tools and processes we use at Google and especially in Google Cloud to apply mindful testing to our products. So reading from the definition in the Oxford Dictionary, mindfulness is the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. So what is mindful testing? To understand this, let's talk about integration testing to which the concept of mindful testing applies the most. We know that integration tests are a complex system. We know that we have to constantly balance trade-offs between too many tests and too few tests when it comes to integration tests. If you have too many integration tests, you may have great coverage of your product, but your release life cycle might be slow. If you have too few tests, you may be releasing very quickly, but at the cost possibly of reliability and velocity of your system. We also know that tests have a life cycle. If you want to add a new feature, you may need to add new tests. If you change or deprecate a feature, you may need to change or deprecate the tests that you have. So in summary, what we believe is tests can help you improve product quality, but only through thoughtful care. So going back to mindful testing, how do we define that? We define it as the art and science of writing and maintaining just the right amount of tests that give you enough product coverage. Why mindful testing? There are four reasons that we would like to present to you about why mindful testing is important. The first one is reliability. You want to find those bugs before your customers do. You also want to make sure that you are delivering a stable, dependable product to your customers. Mindful testing can help you provide that reliability. Our second reason is time to market. If you want faster time to market for your features in your product, mindful testing can help you achieve that with a good balance between too many and too few tests. The third reason is technical debt and reducing that. And the fourth reason is developer productivity. Both of these, the third and fourth reason, are great reasons to make sure your engineers are happier. And who doesn't want that? So hopefully we've convinced you that mindful testing is an interesting concept that can help you and your product overall. Let's talk about five tips for mindful testing. We will present to you five useful tips to achieve mindful testing that we continuously try to adopt for our teams and our products here. To start with, Listen to your tests. When they fail, they're telling you something very important. Now, to listen to your tests and be able to take action when they fail, you need to start with a setup that has high signal to noise ratio. At Google, we do this by ensuring that every failure type has an owner. And we have routing tools that automatic route failures correctly to the corresponding team. For example, a GCE integration end-to-end -end test failure could be routed to the control plane, the virtualization, the guest OS, or the kernel team, and so on. Also, we want to take immediate action when failures happen. We achieve this by setting response SLOs 
to our test failures. And we do this by having bug master rotations from different teams to keep an eye on the builds when they fail. We also have a philosophy of roll back first and investigate later. We have playbooks that developers follow to make the job easier in investigating those failures. In addition, we need to follow up on large scale test breakages with postmortems. The postmortem analysis look into how could we prevent such breakages from happening again and how could we shift our testing to the left. And also our philosophy here is write the smallest test possible. We try to apply the same rigor of production outages to our test outages, especially the integration and end-to-end -end tests. Help your tests stay healthy. They need your help developing good habits. The first habit we try to, to develop is running on hermetic test infrastructure versus non-hermetic one. Ephemeral test environments allow your tests to run in isolation, be repeatable and easier to debug. Here, this is an example of KIND, which is Kubernetes in a Docker as a system in a box test infrastructure. It enables you to run hermetic tests and it allows you to run integration tests for Kubernetes, Istio's, or Anthos application. The environment here would be isolated with no external dependencies and be completely ephemeral. We also want to ensure that tests clean up after themselves. Now, this is needed mostly when we share the test environment across different tests. We know that setting up a hermetic ephemeral test environment is not possible for every single test suite either because of the cost or because of the complexity of systems. So in those cases where we are sharing a test environment across different test suites, we need to make sure that we clean up every, every single test run and we keep the shared environment in a good state. To enable compute engine tests to clean up after themselves effectively, we created tools for as project rental service. This allows GCE developers to use few test projects to run their integration tests. As a test starts to run, they would go and rent a project out of a pool of projects. They would use that project to do any testing needed. And then when they're done, they would return the project to the service. Now the service is responsible of cleaning up the project, deleting all resources, and setting the project back to a clean slate, which could be reused again for other testing. This separates the test from the cleanup needed and guarantees that the cleanup is done effectively and correctly. We also want to invest in root causing and debugging tools. No matter what environment we're running in, either if it's hermetic or shared environment, we need good root causing and debugging tools. For example, tools like Cloud Debugger can help you significantly in debugging your cloud application. The third tip is to discipline your tests with respect because sometimes they will try your patience. Our strategy for having healthy tests, the cornerstone of this is to manage flakiness. Let's talk a little bit about why managing flakiness is so important to us. Consider a microservices architecture with about 40 critical components. If each of those components is only 0.26% flaky, you would still get an overall environment flakiness of 10%. To get an overall environment flakiness of about 1.5%, which is a good standard for being able to release products uh, quickly, you would still need each component to have just 0.038% flakiness. So hopefully this shows you why managing flakiness is critical for us. We manage flakiness with two approaches. One is that we track flakiness numbers really closely. So we know when and where and how flakiness shows up in our integration test. Here is an example of a graph that one of our metrics tool generated. As you can see here, it shows a 90 day trend for not only how much flakiness is present in our systems, but also the number of test targets that were affected by this flakiness. 
So this is an example of this and many other metrics we track around flakiness to help us understand how to combat it better. We also invest in long-term flakiness fixes. This is an example of a before and after from a flakiness fix it. As you can see, the before has a lot more inconsistency and flakiness, while the after looks a lot more consistent in terms of the test results we see there. Fixes are a long-term tradition at Google, where teams will set aside time from their regular work for up to a week or more sometimes to focus on engineering excellence themes and flakiness is a very popular theme to focus on. So in summary, we discipline our tests with managing flakiness, tracking it, and making sure that we prioritize long-term fixes. Teach your test independence, so you don't have to tend to their needs often. We really want to lower the maintenance cost of all our tests. Maintaining the test is very expensive, so we start with proper capacity planning. We need to provide adequate resources to run our tests quickly and correctly. At Google, we do this by taking inventory of all our test resources needed once a year to make sure that the existing tests could run properly and also to ensure that we have enough capacity during the coming year for additional tests. The graph here shows you why capacity planning is important and measuring is important as well. Here, we could see that there is an amount of unused resources for running that single test. We could reduce the resources allocated for that test so that we could run either more tests or we could increase the parallelism of our testing and reduce the time to finish the tests. Write once, run anywhere is our philosophy to get the maximum out of your test, especially when you're dealing with integration and to-end -end testing. This allows you to run tests against different test environments and to validate them quicker. Anthos is an example of such an infrastructure that follows the WARA paradigm. It allows you to run your application and the tests either on-prem or on the public cloud. At Google, we also invest a lot in smart test infrastructure. For example, machine learning based pre-submits that run fewer targeted tests instead of the whole test suites based on different signals, especially from the change list being submitted. This will reduce the amount of resources needed to run on the, at the same time, keeping a high confidence of our test coverage and the signal. Also, automatic capacity planning, where we could automatically reduce the resources needed per test run and reuse those resources for other runs. We need to spend a lot of time with our tests and our test infrastructure. We start with proper maintenance. And here I'm talking about maintaining our critical user journeys and tracking feature coverage for our testing. To give you an example, the GCE live migration feature presented here is mapped to certain CUJs that we have tests to cover. Those tests are tracked and we have automatic tooling to track the coverage based on the CUJs for GCE. This helps us keep focus on where testing is needed the most and in preventing regressions in CUJ test coverage. We know that CUJ testing, especially integration end-to-end -end, are very costly and we want to make the best use of our testing. We also need to keep an eye on upgrading our test infrastructure to new technologies that could allow us to run tests faster or debug them or maintain them better. At Google, we do this by having core teams responsible of common test infrastructure that is used across different Google teams. For example, we have a common system integration test framework that allows us to benefit from any improvements the team does on that test infrastructure and allow us to move quickly to new technologies. We also want to look into adding more test coverage and test features as we see appropriate. And here we're focusing on follow-ups on production outages, where we do an analysis on what testing is needed to prevent those outages from happening again. And also based on customer issues or on test outages themselves. As I said, big test outages could lead to more testing different pieces in the pipeline, especially moving left to the development cycle.
Also, we need to look into deleting and deprecating our tests. This is needed when features are deprecated or when critical user journeys priorities are changed. And by that, we need to keep an eye on the testing that we're running and deprecate them or change the flow we run them. So those were the five tips that we wanted to share with you. We have a couple of key takeaways for you from our talk. The first one is that mindful testing can help change your organization's culture to focus on healthy and regularly cared for tests. The second takeaway we have for you is that mindful testing will really help you get more return on investment from your tests. We wanted to give a shout out to two talks from CloudNext 2019. Both of these have a deep dive into the different concepts that we talked about today. And they also talk about how you can apply these concepts and thereby mindful testing to by using the different products we have available on the Google Cloud platform. So do check them out. That's all we had to share with you today. Thank you so much for listening to our talk. Thank you all for listening to us. Please give us feedback on how you apply mindful testing in your organization and if you find these tips useful. Thank you.